11 million people tuned in to watch the season three premiere of Rick and Morty. And Rick and Morty's fans are so obsessed that a throwaway joke, I want my McNugget dipping sauce Szechuan sauce, Morty, was enough to make McDonald's bring back a limited edition dipping sauce from 1998. Clearly, there's something about this show that resonates with people today. It has an attitude many of us can relate to. Seems like TV from other dimensions has a somewhat looser feel to it. Yeah, it's got an almost improvisational tone. So as we wait for the 70 more episodes that have now been confirmed, let's take a moment to ask how this show that has risen so rapidly to incredible popularity expresses the sensibility of our times. Thank you to Verve for sponsoring this video. Verve, spelled V-R-V, is a video streaming platform that brings together the best channels on anime, gaming, tech, and cartoons like Crunchyroll, Funimation, Mondo, Rooster Teeth, Geek and Sundry, Drama Fever. Right now, Verve is teaming up with Screen Prism to give our viewers 30 days of Verve Premium for free. Just click the link in our description below. What are our times, anyway? It's not always easy to see everything about your own present day very clearly. Looking back at history, things become more crystallized into eras and movements with labels. The Renaissance, the Enlightenment, Romanticism. But trying to label the zeitgeist while you're living it can feel a little like trying to see the Earth is round while you're standing on it. Still, how can we try to define today's way of thinking? And how is that mindset reflected in Rick and Morty? The defining mode of thought in art and culture for many recent decades has been postmodernism. To understand postmodernism, first we have to look at modernism, a cultural movement inspired by the increasingly industrialized cities and changing lifestyle of the late 1800s and early 1900s. Modernism was about breaking with the past, embracing the new and modern, finding innovation in art and technology, and grappling with the horrors of World War I. But modernism still had faith in the power of humankind to create a better world through science, technology, and the applied human mind. After World War II, modernism was eventually displaced by postmodernism, a movement that rejected the one-size-fits-all grand narratives of modernism. Instead, postmodernism saw truth and values as the product of cultural and social circumstances. It embraced moral relativism, pluralism, not one universal meaning for everyone. Postmodernism was irreverent. Frederick Jameson said it showed a waning of affect, meaning it had less sincere emotion and more irony and skepticism. Rick and Morty has definitely been called a postmodern show before. It has postmodernism's irreverent self-referentiality. Roll the credits, go! Just shake that ass! That's the end of season one! That's the end, motherfucker! It's deconstruction of grand narratives. I, I accept your call to adventure, good sir, kind sir. Come on, Rick, there's a giant in the clouds. Yeah, <coughs> beginner's luck. And it's irony and skepticism. There is no God Summer. Gotta rip that band-aid off now, you'll thank me later. And yet, despite all the cynicism and self-awareness, the show also gives us sincere, deeply felt moments. Like the time Morty has to bury his own dead body. Or when Unity breaks up with Rick and he presumably tries to commit suicide. These scenes demonstrate that there's a strong undercurrent of genuine feeling beneath the facade of not caring about things. As the New Republic's Eric Armstrong put it, Royland and Harmon are asserting the value of sentimentality cloaked in Lovecraftian postmodernism. It seems as though, in general, in our culture, sentimentality and earnestness are starting to come back into vogue. Look at the success of The Shape of Water, which won Best Picture and Best Director at the 2018 Academy Awards. The film's director, Guillermo del Toro, has actually emphasized the film's earnestness. And the thing that is important for me is to be shameless and earnest and honest and not postmodern. As cultural theorists Timotheus Vermeulen and Robin van den Acker argue, all postmodern tendencies aren't being abandoned, but they are taking on a new sensibility. So what we're seeing is that postmodernism's clever dissection of grand narratives is still very much in play. So dark! You sure you're not from the DC universe? But today there's also a strong desire for hope and meaning again. This shift back towards earnestness is likely a reaction to the long list of pressures facing our society today. Our divided political landscape, climate change, globalization, financial crises, tensions over how a modern society approaches race, gender, and sexuality. In the face of all these challenges, neither postmodernism 
nor modernism is really going to cut it alone. To paraphrase Vermeulen and Van den Acker, modernists were too confident in humanity's ability to fix everything, while postmodernists were too apathetic. To put that another way, it's as if modernists say, World War I was tough, but we're smart and we have awesome technology and innovation, so we can make everything good. Postmodernists say, we were wrong to think we could really change the world for the better, let's just play in the ruins because nothing means anything anyway. These days, we say, we know enough to see that everything very possibly won't turn out okay, but we can't afford to give up hope. Vermeulen and Van den Acker call this new, emerging way of thought metamodernism and they define it as an oscillation between the modern and the postmodern. Metamodernism is a pendulum constantly swinging back and forth, that push and pull between optimistic sentiment and cynical detachment. So now that you've stayed with us through all of that, what's really fascinating is that this oscillation matches up very well with the key back and forth we find in Rick and Morty. Take this quote from Vermeulen and Van den Acker, which basically sounds like it could be describing the show. Metamodernism oscillates between a modern enthusiasm I love my grandkids. and a postmodern irony, oh, psych. between hope Thanks. and melancholy, between naivete and knowingness, empathy and apathy. Each time the metamodern enthusiasm swings toward fanaticism, gravity pulls it back toward irony. The moment its irony sways toward apathy, gravity pulls it back toward enthusiasm. This oscillation is everywhere in Rick and Morty. Here, Morty is having what looks like a psychedelic soul union with the fart. But then it's cut short. Shut the f up about moon men! And he's forced to shoot his new alien friend. Or here, he's enjoying the sunset. But one minute later, things take a turn for the worse. Basically, every time there's a melodic pop song in the soundtrack, it's almost an announcement that the show has reached peak sentimentality and it's gonna be swinging back towards cynicism very soon. For example, in season three, we get the episode The Rick Lantis Mix Up. This standalone episode about the utopian citadel of Rick's earnestly explores late capitalism and racial politics. Same old story, Morty's killing Morty's. Its final sequence set to sentimental music, in addition to revealing the evil Morty connection, makes us feel a deep sadness and regret about our modern lives, with our mind-numbing jobs, our fake happiness for sale, and our evil politicians. But lest we get the wrong idea from all this serious commentary, the very next episode, Morty's Mind Blowers, undermines that clear, earnest insight with a collection of disconnected vignettes, and the episode ends with Rick and Morty both forgetting everything and watching TV. How did we fall asleep during interdimensional cable? The point of Morty's Mind Blowers is basically that Rick and Morty's life is made up of repeating the same disturbing, meaningless cycle over and over. On its own, the episode Morty's Mind Blowers is peak postmodernism. But in the larger structure of the season, it's the pendulum, swinging back to balance out what we just saw in the Rick Lantis mix-up. Other times, the show gives us sentimentality I'm okay with this. Be good, Morty. Be better than me. And then backtracks. The other caller! I'm not okay with this! Telling us that what we saw and believed to be genuine sentiment was actually false. God, oh Lord, hear my prayer. Yes! F you, God! Not today, bitch! Rick arranges for his capture by the Federation, sacrificing himself to save his family to the soundtrack of Nine Inch Nails' is Hurt. Then in season three, we learn that Rick wasn't actually sacrificing himself for his family. He was just doing the usual. You came to rescue them. I came to kill you, bro. That's not even my original summer. Oh my God, he's not bluffing. Trying to disrupt the powers that be by making supposedly meaningful things meaningless. But watch closely as grandpa topples an empire by changing a one to a zero. So the show undermines what it's previously presented and rewrites itself to never let us get comfortable with either the sentimental investment or the ironic detachment. This push and pull can be seen in pretty much every aspect of the show. One protagonist is a cynical nihilist, the other is a hopeful, empathetic kid. And within Rick himself, we see this tension constantly. 
We have talked before about how Rick's character arc fluctuates between caring and not caring. He finds meaning by zooming into the love he has for his family, and then he reverts to zooming out and knowing that everything is meaningless. And that brings us back to us and the zeitgeist Rick and Morty is tapping into. In many ways, Rick's emotional back and forth is a mirror of how a lot of people feel today. Even if we don't have Rick's access to innumerable galaxies, the internet gives us access to innumerable information bites. So like Rick, we have the ability to see how tiny our lives are in comparison to the bigger world and universe out there. And we can find ourselves a little exhausted by the never-ending depressing, disturbing news produced by a world that doesn't always seem worth investing in. But in spite of all that, we also don't want to give up hope. Because like Rick, we do care in spite of how insurmountable the problems can seem. So we can see that Rick's back and forth sine wave of caring and not caring is a pretty accurate reflection of the zeitgeist. The show's popularity is more than just a sum of its many great parts, as it balances irony and empathy, idealism and nihilism, enthusiasm and apathy, Rick and Morty perfectly embodies that ever-swinging pendulum of the spirit of today. God damn it! Why am I crying? This makes no sense. Ugh, you're, you're probably confused because we barely know each other, but but you're different, noob noob. Mother. Hey guys, so in the absence of new Rick and Morty episodes, you might want to start getting into Harmon Quest. It's Dan Harmon and his posse playing D&D with celebrity guests, half animated, half live action. It's quite funny actually, and we love this episode with Aubrey Plaza. Uh, my name is Hawaiian Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it can't, I'm not a psychologist, but it almost sounds like you, you just made your name up. <laughs> Well, doesn't every name sound like that? For a short window of time, you can check out Harmon Quest for free, thanks to Verve. Verve is a very cool new platform from the people at Crunchyroll. They've got all the best anime, both subbed and dubbed, animated shows like Camp Camp and Cyanide and Happiness, Nature Docs, there can never be enough, David Attenborough, and more. Premium members can watch all their favorite shows ad-free and get access to exclusive series and first access to new content, like the new Mondo show Gary and His Demons about an aging demon hunter suffering from professional burnout. Right now, Screen Prism fans can get 30 days of Verve Premium for free. No ads, sync to any device, watch offline, the works. Don't wait, just click the link in our description below and start watching today.